These words in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. We continue our exploration of the scripture text through the lens of a particular spirituality type. This week, focusing on the fire spirituality type. If this is your spirituality type, you may find you enter the truth and presence of God through your head, not initially from your heart, although often your heart is set on fire by what you learn, especially when it comes to the social injustices of our world. You are intellectually active and enjoy reading books or hearing speakers who stimulate your thought process. Others may describe you as a single-minded visionary who often becomes impatient with others who may not share their vision about what needs to change in our world. You consider yourself a change agent and take that responsibility, responsibility seriously. And you often challenge others to move from complacency to action. Your passion is strong, and sometimes being right can be more important than being in relationship with those who just don't get it. Often you find your spiritual home in small groups where your voice can be heard and where you can fully express your passion. People with fire spirituality often say, I pray with my hands and my feet. Because we learned last week the value of the, of the context of the text and look closely at the literary form of the passage, we'll begin there again. But you'll see we don't stay there, for fire spirituality types often lean into subversive or alternative explanations of the scripture, for they look at everything upside down, as Jesus often did. The context of our passage is the continuation of last week's setting. Jesus is in the temple, having turned over the money tables, healed people, taught the crowds, and the tension continues to rise as we are on Monday of Holy Week. As we did last week, we could consider this parable to be an allegory, but quite honestly, it falls apart at the end. For if we imagine God as the king, then God is the one who cast out the person poorly dressed, and that seems unlikely by what we know about God through Jesus. And from a fire spirituality perspective, we would cast away that typical allegorical interpretation because it has been the source of anti-Semitism, implying that the Jewish people have rejected God's invitation to salvation, they are no longer worthy, and so they are now discarded and the Gentiles assume their position as the favored ones of God. The important part of the context, though, can be what follows this parable, the question to Jesus about paying taxes to Caesar. Jesus is setting the stage for the distinction between the kingdom of heaven, which his incarnation has inaugurated, and the kingdom of the world, or imperial oppression. And so perhaps Matthew has taken to heart the notion that Jesus' messiahship is not about overcoming oppression with violence and subsequent oppression, but maybe Jesus' message is nonviolence resistance. Oh, so suddenly the fire spirituality types are excited about this message. So we look for an alternative interpretation leading us into an upside-down perspective a call to think differently than what might be told by the group now seeking or holding privilege. And we do so by engaging with our Anglican beads and raising up characters in the story or places of tension in the story because fire spirituality types want to know how that text connects with the world we have today. Noticing where wrong is being righted or where people are standing firm in their conviction to bring in the kingdom of heaven by resisting allegiance to the kingdom of our world. So I'm going to invite you now to hold your Anglican beads in your hands. 
So we, you will notice, and these beads were so lovingly made by Janine Goodwin, so I want you to hold her in your heart for those of you who knew Janine when she was here. She's now in Long Island, but we're so grateful for this beautiful gift. So of course you notice at first we entered the beads through the cross, because everything always begins with Christ. And so let us welcome God's presence and say together in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And at the next bead, the smaller bead, we take a pause. And we offer to God whatever it is that is most on our hearts. It could be a prayer of thanksgiving. Or a plea for help. Or an offer of our souls. Breathe into that space. The next bead you will find on your journey is one made of clay, a beautiful swirling of colors. This is the invitatory bead. So let us invite God into our souls by praying the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now you will notice that there are seven large beads remaining and a smaller bead between them. On the larger beads, we will raise up people associated with the story who reflect the kingdom of heaven, or not, and on the smaller beads which follow, we will pray for them. So let us take a breath on the next smaller bead and then proceed to the first large bead. Here we hold in our hearts those who suffer, struggle, or choose not to fight violence with violence, who are strong in their conviction, who honor the world, the kingdom's work of love. <clears throat> the 2023 Nobel Peace Prize winner is an example of someone willing to bear personal cost to fight for the rights of others. Narjes Mohammadi has been recognized for her fight against the oppression of women in Iran and her fight to promote human rights and freedom for all. Her brave struggle has come with tremendous personal costs. Altogether, the regime has arrested her 13 times, convicted her five times, and sentenced her to a total of 31 years in prison and she has received 154 lashes. Ms. Mohammadi is still in prison. In September 2022, a young Kurdish woman was killed while in the custody of the Iranian Moral Police. Her killing triggered the largest political demonstrations against Iran's theocratic regime since it came to power in 1979. Under the slogan, Woman, Life, Freedom, Hundreds of Iranians took part in peaceful protest against the brutality and oppression of women by the authorities. The regime cracked down hard on the protest. More than 500 demonstrators were killed. So let us hold Ms. Muhammad, Muhammad, I've really been practicing this word and I knew I wasn't, wouldn't get it right all the way. Let us hold her in our hearts as we hold the speed with our fingers. We move now to the small bead and offer this prayer. We pray for those who choose suffering to defend the rights of all people, who are willing to bear the consequences of systemic discrimination and oppression to shed light on the vulnerable people in our societies, who assume tremendous personal cost for the abundant life desired for all people by following in the footsteps of Jesus. <laughs> And now let us move to the second larger bead. Here we raise up those who choose not to come to the party, those who move away from the worldly wedding feast, those who resist the commands of those in power to find the right path, such as the Magi who disobeyed Herod's directive and instead warned the Holy Family to exile in Egypt, or John the Baptist who, in an act which cost him his life, 
denounced Herod's marriage to his sister-in-law, choosing to name the truth and move away from complicity in the wrong actions of those in power. To see how this is reflected in our world, we look at Greta Thunberg, a Swedish environmental activist who is known for challenging world leaders to take immediate action for climate change mitigation. Thunberg's climate activism began when she persuaded her parents to adopt lifestyle choices that reduced her family's carbon footprint. In April 2019, age 16, Greta Thunberg told the members of the European Parliament, our house is falling apart and our leaders need to start acting accordingly because at the moment they are not. And five months later, she spoke at a UN Climate Action Summit in New York. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean, yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. Let us move to the prayer beat. We pray today for those who choose to move away from the oppressive ways of the world, who speak the truth of the world's destructive systems of power and way of greed, and who choose right action in the face of the world leaders, who follow in the footsteps of Jesus to save all of humanity. And now we hold the third larger bead as we raise up the garmentless people of our world. For those who refuse to put on the outer appearance of success, which reveals their collusion with an oppressive system or one built on privilege, who choose to live simply so others can simply live, who take the Sermon on the Mount seriously, who believe the story of the lilies of the field, who know the world's expectations of us do not necessarily bring us the joys of the kingdom of heaven. Today we lift up Charles Feeney, who made a fortune and then gave it away. He was a pioneer of duty-free shops and a shrewd investor in technology startups and who gave away nearly all his $8 billion fortune to charity, much of it as quietly as he made it. In December 2016, with his donation of $7 million to his alma mater, Cornell University, for student community service work, he fulfilled his pledge to give away virtually all his wealth before he died. Unlike philanthropists whose names are publicized or celebrated at banquets or emblazoned on building facades and museum wings, Mr. Feeney gave anonymously to universities, medical institutions, scientific endeavors, human rights groups, peace initiatives, and scores of causes intended to improve lives around the world. Let us move to the next prayer bead and offer this prayer. We pray today for those who know it is better to give than to receive, who humbly offer all of themselves for a better world, their time, their talent, their treasure, who refuse acclamation by the world because they see the distinction between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the world, and they wish to remain true to the kingdom of heaven who follow in Jesus' footsteps, in his self-offering, his humility, and his care for the poor and neglected in our societies. As we move to the fourth bead, we raise up today those who are like the speechless man, who choose silence rather than being complicit with false testimony, who demonstrate integrity, resistance, and innocence instead of offering a false answer which would save his life. This was Jesus when he chose silence before the high priest, which led to his crucifixion. And there are times when silence is the only answer, and there are times when silence is not the answer, when silence involves complicity with the oppressor. So let's consider Bonhoeffer, 
the Lutheran pastor who opposed the Nazis in his home country of Germany, who in 1939 considered taking refuge in the United States, but returned after only two weeks in New York City, writing to his sponsor, the theologian Nierberg, that I, have no, I will have no right to participate in the reconstruction of Christian life in Germany after the war if I do not share the trials of this time with my people. The next year, Bonhoeffer charged that the church was silent when it should have cried out because the blood of the innocent was crying aloud to heaven. She is guilty of the deaths of the weakest and the most defenseless brothers of Jesus Christ. To know when to be silent or when to speak is often a difficult question for us to answer. As we move to our prayer bead, we ask prayers today for those who refuse to speak against injustice out of fear of incrimination or violence, who choose to be safe rather than righteous, who allow innocent people to suffer because they can easily look the other way. We pray too for those who choose to be silent, who would rather be condemned than give false testimony, who honor personal integrity over approval. On the fifth larger bead, we raise up those few chosen among the many called, the ones who are a model of Matthew's discipleship, who honor Jesus' teaching, who desire to be aligned with the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of the world, and whose allegiance to the kingdom of heaven will be tested. These are those of us who understand that our baptism is not to be a once-and-done event, but it is a continual invitation and testing to daily choose to align our values with Jesus' words of love. We may think of those today who participate in the innocence projects across the country, whose mission st statement is, we work to free the innocent, prevent wrongful convictions, and create fair, compassionate, and equitable systems of justice for everyone. A recent case is Perry Lott, who is exonerated after 35 years whose conviction was based on an unreliable witness identification, which was based on a suggestive police lineup. Lott himself says, I have never lost hope that this day would come. I had faith that the truth would prevail even after 35 years. I am grateful to everyone who supported me and helped in my fight for freedom. He is among those few chosen, for he continued in faith in conviction of right overturning wrong, and in his choice to be grateful for those working to free him, rather than vengeful to those who had falsely convicted him. Let us move to the next small prayer bead and pray. Today we pray for those who never lose hope, even in the face of injustice, who endure the testing of the world which showers oppression and prejudice upon them, but who hold fast to their belief of a better world, who follow in Jesus' footsteps by knowing in the end all will be well. For with God, that is the only option. On the sixth larger prayer bead, we stop and hold in our hearts those who are complicit with systemic oppression, who are the hateful kings for those who annihilate reputations or kill others who believe separately than they do, for those who use power for their own gain, even knowing the cost to others. These can be the company executives of our oil and gas companies who know the cost to the planet of stripping the earth of her precious resources and using the resources that promote climate change to the detriment of humanity. We must pray even for those who oppress others. So let us move to the next bead and offer this prayer. Today we pray for those who knowingly and willingly 
put their need for security, wealth, and power above the needs of all people, who risk the lives of others through their need for access rather than learning the ways of the kingdom of love, who follow in the footsteps of the king who believes in retribution, not grace, who demands loyalty through violence, and who closes his eyes to the horror he imposes on others. We rest on the final larger bead as we pray today for us, as we who do our best and sometimes get it wrong, we who participate in crimes done on our behalf without adequate and faithful resistance, we who believe somehow that we have earned our privileged lives, we who refuse to look the stranger in the eye for fear our hearts may break open, and we choose rather to guard our vulnerable heart. Moving to the next and last breath bead, we pray. We pray today for us. We pray that God forgives the falseness that we have become. We pray that God strengthens us in our resolve to live holy lives where we stand up for justice, where we advocate on the behalf of those more vulnerable, where we take a stand for the kingdom of heaven. One way to explore the scripture from a fire spirituality type perspective is to find the places of nonviolent resistance to oppression and to see how this is unfolding in our lives and to pray into those places and support them as they align to the teachings of Jesus. So this is a time to reflect. Where were you in this story? Which bead resonated the most with you? Where did your heart and mind engage the most? What might you be called to do? To act on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. This story suggests we take the allegiance to the kingdom of heaven very seriously, which often means we must resist the kingdom of this world equally seriously. With real passion and energy for our allegiance with will be tested. And although we may be the one cast out in the darkness as the garment garmentless man was, our reward will be in our knowledge of following the way of Jesus, the way of love. 